Hey guys, it's Shox here with the second part of the StarCraft 2 race comparison guide. In this video I want to talk about the Protoss race and their build mechanics that set them apart from the other two races in StarCraft. The first thing I want to talk about is their style of building. Unlike the other two races, Protoss is the only race that can actually, you can use one, u one worker to construct your entire base, which is really nice. The basic uh, building you need to build first off is your supply supply building, which is going to increase your supply count so you can build more units, and that's your pylon. And unlike other um, unlike other supply unit or buildings from other two races, pylons are actually really important for a Protoss player because the pylon sets off this field, as you see right here, uh, the power field, and your buildings can only be placed in this power field. So every time you want to build a building besides a pylon, it has to be within this power field that's powered powered by a pylon. So for example, if I want to build a gateway, it has to be in this power field. As you can see, it's green. If I try and build outside this power field, it's going to be red and it doesn't allow me to build there. So I have to build this uh, inside this pylon. And as you can see, I can build multiple buildings with just one with just one probe, which you can't do with any other race. So like I said, you only need one probe to construct your entire base throughout the entire game, which is really nice. The next big thing I want with the Protoss uh, race is Chrono Boost. Your Nexus has this ability called Chrono Boost, which is going to speed up your production of either your units or any upgrades of a building by 50%, which is really nice in case in the early game it helps with your economy, you're able to um, pump out probes a lot faster to boost up your economy and then later on if you need a couple upgrades or if you're trying to produce a couple of units really quickly to get out timing push such as Colossus or uh, Immortals. So if I was to go with an upgrade I can then use Chrono Boost and cast it onto my forge and it's going to speed up this upgrade by 50% for 20 seconds. Same goes for here. If I want to build a Immortal from my robotics bay, I can cast Chrono Boost on my robotics bay and it's going to speed up my robotics bay production by 50% for 20 seconds to get that immortal out 50% quicker as long as I keep Chrono Boost casted on there that entire time during production. That's a really big thing with um, the Protoss economy and all throughout their entire uh, gameplay is really util utilizing the Chrono Boost and making sure you use it correctly and often because a lot of new players they'll forget about it and they won't use it which is always a good reason to have your Nexus hotkeyed and so you can quickly click uh, your Nexus and then Chrono Boost buildings or upgrades throughout the game. The next big thing with uh, Protoss which no other race can be done is the ability to warp units in across the battlefield. Uh, right here you see warp gates which look different than the original gateways. These gateways, this is the default gateway you can build, but once you upgrade from your cybernetic score, it would be down here, it's called warp gate, warp gate technology. Once you get that upgrade done, you're able to actually turn all your gateways into warp gates. And you see it takes 10 seconds for them uh, to turn into them, and this is really important for any, uh, for any Protoss player, especially if they're going heavy ground units, because the ability to warp units in in battle is really crucial and very it's going to help you in any game. So as you can see here, I have like a pylon next to my opponent's base. So I select W, which is the hotkey to select all my warp gates, and then I can just warp in units wherever within a power field. Now you don't want to do that right by... You don't want to do that right next to their army, but as you guys see, you can warp in units right there, which is really nice. So I can do it anywhere, but I, you can't do it offside power fields. So you can warp in units anywhere on power fields, but that you can't do it off off the power field. So the next big thing with the Protoss units or Protoss race is all their units and even their buildings. They have a shield shield technology, which basically they have lower HP, but than uh, a normal unit, but they also have a shield. So as you can see here. Besides just having HP, they have a shield, and their shield, which is the blue, goes down first. And then once their shield is completely depleted, then they'll start losing the HP. So if I can grab, if I grab this unit, pull him back. Well, he has zero, he has zero ability shield, and he's already lost a lot of his HP. If you see, his shield is already regenerating just from being outside combat. So over time, his shield's going to regenerate from zero up to 80. So he basically now has double the HP or the amount of health once his shield fully regenerates. 
And that's one big thing about the Protoss is their shield. While they have lower HP, they do have the shield, so after battle, you just get them out of battle. As long as they're out of battle, their shields will regenerate. And a good Protoss player will be able to blink these stalkers behind and let their shields regenerate um, and keep them out of battle while their shields regenerate to give them additional health. So from then just having 18 HP, he now has 80 shield and 18 HP out of 80, which is really good. Now the next big thing too about the Protoss units, which I don't have, it's a, if you want to do, you can build a Dark Templar Shine, which you don't see too often in high level games, but a lot of low level games you will see this. Dark Templar Shine will allow me to warp in Dark Templars. What Dark Templars are, they're really powerful units, and they're um, automatically invisible. So your, your, your opponent won't be able to see your Dark Templars unless they have some type of detection such as a turret or they scan in the Terran, in this Terran case, or if it's Zerg, have an Overseer or Protoss with an Observer. So against new players, uh, Dark Templars work really good. Um, the Shrine takes a long time to build, but if you can get them early game, they can be really powerful. Now if they do detect you, uh, they are pretty weak and, and if uh, they get attacked, they go down really quickly. But if you're able to get them inside your opponent's base without being seen and they don't have any detection, they could win a lot of games for you. Another big thing with the Protoss is they have the best static defense compared to any other race. They're photon cannons, which requires a forge to build. Uh, you're able to put photon cannons and they're able to attack both ground and air. And they're probably the best static defense in the game. Where Terran doesn't really have any static defense and Zerg would have their... Spine crawler that only attacks ground. The photon cannon attacks both ground and air. The only bad thing about Glorious there's two bad things about Protoss. One is their shield because their shield is um, Terran players. If they have ghosts, they can EMP your uh, units, which would basically cause an explosion right by your units. It doesn't do any damage to them, but it does uh, destroy their shield. So that basically it would take almost half their health away. For in, most, in some Protoss, or in some units' cases. So that's one negative side about the Protoss, and another thing is pylon placement is very important. As you can see right here, I have really bad pylon placement. This is not how you would want to set up a photon cannon base. So if a player was to come in and I have seven cannons there, they just have to focus down this pylon, and once this pylon goes down, it's going to disable all these photon cannons. So you have to be as you see, just disabled all the photon cannons. So pylon placement is very important. It's something you wanna, you don't usually wanna just have one pylon powering up all your buildings or structures. You'd usually stick one in the middle, and maybe one in the back, just to pi uh, power them all up. As you can see here, if they took down one pylon, that wouldn't di that wouldn't disable my buildings. They would have to take down a number of pylons. Where compared to this base, if they were to come in and just take out down this one pylon, that would disable all these buildings and leave them useless. So again, you can tell the Protoss is a lot different than the other two races. Um, they're po I see a lot of beginners uh, like to go Protoss. They're a pretty e easy race to start off with, especially since you can just use one probe or worker to construct your entire base. And they're a pretty good race for beginners. So the key thing is trying all three races, finding the one you like, and once you find the race you like, staying with it. You don't want to be jumping race to race until you actually become pretty good at one race. Um, later on in the game, you do want to you do want to try other races because it's very important to know, even say for example your main race is Terran. It's very important you know different things such as, uh, say this Dark Templar. So if you scout your opponent's base and you see this Dark Templar shrine, you know they're probably going to get Dark Templars. So then you can get some type of detection up. So even though you want to stick with main race, I would try and learn the very basics of each race. That way you can um, know the information for one of you scouting them. So the next video we're going to do, we're going to do the uh, Zerg in the next one. So thanks for watching.